Hey YouTube, I'm Ali, welcome to the channel. Now, when I started playing board games, working out who went first was really done on a roll of a dice. Today, I think there are four distinct methods used in modern board games. This video is all about helping you determine which of those four you should use for your own board game. And I'm gonna do that by running through each one with some examples and some insights on which method best suits which kind of game. Hopefully you'll find this information useful, and if you do, please consider subscribing, or at the very least, give this video a thumbs up. So what are these four mysterious methods that I alluded to in my intro? Well, the first one is simply asking the players a question and then using the information they supply to make a selection. The second is using some sort of random selector, like a, a dice or a, a pack of cards, or even an app nowadays. The third is to get the players to do something to win their place. And the fourth, well, the fourth is a bit of a cop-out, but it is basically to allow the players to choose themselves. For each of these, I'm going to go through in a little bit more detail, give you some examples, and make some suggestions on which games I think they better suit. Let's start with ask a question then. This is by far my favorite, and the reason is quite simple. It's because I can apply or reinforce my game theme in the question. Now, the kinds of question are usually answered by the most of or the best of. Um, examples, um, Forbidden Desert is a game about surviving uh, being lost in the desert. So the question that the game asks to determine who goes first is, who here is the thirstiest? In Ticket to Ride, a game about traveling, the question is, who's the most well-traveled player here? Whoever that is goes first. The question is very simple, but it reinforces the theme. Now, I really like this as a method, especially for party or uh, family games, games that are generally fun in nature. This is a really good way of, of determining who goes first. Now, questions and responses can either be objective or subjective. Objective means that um, you're asking something that's going to give you a specific response. Love Letter uses an objective question, which is, who is the last person to have a date? Now, here, it's a very finite response. This person had this date at this time, and therefore is going to go first because it was the most recent. Conversely, you can also have um, subjective questions. Small World, for example, asks the players to determine who's got the most pointy ears. That's totally up to the players uh, uh, playing the game. You might decide it's Dave, you might uh, just decide it's, it's Malcolm. Uh, I don't know who those two are, but there we go. Anyway, the point is, it's subjective. Um, now, the thing about subjective, I think they really suit party games or games where there's a lot more sort of fun and interaction. So there we go, objective and subjective, great, um, uh, as, uh, um, uh, great uh, elements to make up your questions. Now, on top of being subjective or objective, questions in this category can also fall as being uh, changeable or fixed. Now, a changeable answer changes every time you play it. In Cards Against Humanity, for example, the starting player is the guy who last went for a poo. Every time you play that game, uh, hopefully every time you play that game, it'll be a different response. Um, you can also have fixed questions, such as, who here is the youngest player? Now, I'm calling that fixed because if you don't change the player base, if your game is aimed, for example, at a family, and the family isn't going to change much, which normally it doesn't, it means the answer is always going to be the same. That person there is always going to be the youngest and therefore will always go first. So the point I'm trying to make there is, um, if you're aiming for a family game, then perhaps you want to go for a changeable answer. If you're going for a game that's going to be played in a party environment, then I would probably go with, or I'd be comfortable going with a fixed response because your audience will change and therefore the answer will change. Now, I've already mentioned using dice as a random selector, but the problem with that is that you're not applying theme, and that's a missed opportunity in my book. A really good example of using theme, but still having a random selector, is in the game Bang. There, you're handing out cards, and on one of the cards is a sheriff's badge. The sheriff's badge indicates that that player will go first. 
Again, you're reinforcing the theme because you're handing out sheriff cards for, uh, for crying out loud, um, but you're making it very clear uh, that uh, the choice is still random. So a good way of doing that. Um, where does this suit? Well, really, I would not use this unless I had to. I, I always prefer games where uh, you ask a question, but as a second, having a random selector is perfectly okay, providing you can, I think, try to incorporate theme. Now, in some games, it's vitally important that the player go ahead of other players, and that includes playing first. These games usually involve area control or pl uh, worker placement as a game mechanism. In this situation, um, a really good method to use is to get the players to do something. Games like Spartacus or Game of Thrones actually have a blind bidding system. So as part of the game, you'll pick up a number of coins that you have, you'll put them in your hand, and everyone simultaneously will reveal how many coins they've got. Whoever's got the most gets to be player one, or at least the first player for that round. Uh, a similar example is seen uh, in, or something similar is seen in Five Tribes. In Five Tribes, you're going to actually just put down a monetary value for your place. If someone else wants to uh, go ahead of you, they'll pay a bit more. And finally, we come on to asking the players to choose themselves. Now, no surprise here, I'm not a big fan of this. I would strongly suggest you don't do this. I actually struggled a little finding games that allowed uh, a player to choose themselves um, because I think it's a little bit of a cop-out. Modern board games mostly go with uh, one of the first three methods. Carcassonne was an example where it was almost asking the players to choose because what it does there is it asks the youngest member or the youngest player to to make the choice uh, on everyone's behalf. So the youngest player gets to choose who goes first. That's probably the closest I can get. Anyway, those are the four. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope they found that useful, and if you did, uh, please consider giving this video a quick thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more of this kind of content about designing your own board game, then please consider subscribing to the channel too, because every sub helps. For now though, and until next time, take care guys.